Hey guys, it's Brandon with Magco Whitetails here. Uh, today we're going to be doing moving a couple cameras around, checking cameras we put out about two months ago just to see what's going on in the area. We do have a couple cell cameras, so we kind of know what's going on, uh, but you know, we need to move a couple. Like I'm moving this one, it was only about 200 yards that way to this pipeline opening you see here. Um, you know, we're just going to do a couple tweaks like that, maybe cut down some grass, uh, you know, get good pictures. Uh, so we can show you guys on Instagram what we got. Hopefully some big shooter bucks and whatnot. We're going to start off with I need to clear some stuff off this tree so I can put that camera in like I was saying. Shooting this whole opening so anything coming out of this pipeline out here would, uh, you know, essentially we'd get a picture of. So I'm going to get the Hoyman out, cut this down, cut some of the stuff down a little bit. And this is actually one of the only areas, I don't know if you can see that tree right there and there's a tree right here that I can get a big stand up in. Other than that, they're, you know, they're only two or three inches thick trees, so I can't really get anything up in that. So I need to see if they're coming through here. If they're not, then I'm not going to waste my time on this area. So that's a good, you know, good thing to put the trail camera up here for that. So stay tuned, we're gonna be crossing a creek, we're gonna be doing some crazy stuff uh, to not leave a whole, you know, whole bunch of scent. Uh, stay tuned and we'll uh, go over some tips and tricks along the way. Alright guys, the first thing I really love is this Hoyman saw. It's probably the best handheld saw I think I've ever used. I mean, obviously a power saw is going to be a lot easier, but then you got to bring gas, you got to bring everything else into it. This thing folds up real nice, folds up to about, I don't know, a foot or two. And then, you know, you can carry, it comes with a carrying sling on your, you know, so you can carry it on your back and get into places. A lot of people bring it if they, uh, you know, they're hunting public land or something. Actually, I don't think you can cut down any trees when you hunt public land. But if you're doing like a climber set or something like that and you need to, you know, cut down some trees on on a uh, private land, it's great for that. But I like to use it for this because it'll saw through these in no time. I mean, that's two inches thick right there. I just saw it through it in, what, 10 seconds? Probably not even 10 seconds. This is down. I mean, like it's nothing. There's, there's no point in getting another hand saw if you're gonna do it. And what's kind of cool with it too is if you just want to take it out, this part pops out like that. You can just take that, put that in your hunting bag, and if you need to, like I said, with a climber, you don't have to carry the whole thing. You can just carry something that's close by you within reach. All right, next I'll bring a machete. First off, just because it makes you feel like you're 10 again and reliving the glory days because it's fun to whack stuff. But it's great for tall stuff like this. When I'm trying to put this camera and see across this, this lane, you know, I can't do it. With, I could stomp this down, but it's probably gonna grow back, but if I chop it all off, you know, then it's gonna take months for it to grow back, and by that time, it'll be cold, so it won't grow back. So it'll be perfect for what I'm trying to do right now. All right, guys, so you can see, that's probably one of the easier sets I've done. It's over there on that tree, pretty hidden. Uh, I don't think they should be able to spot it there or anything. And you see, they come from up the top of that ridge up there on that pipeline and hopefully work their way down here. Uh, we'll, we'll find out, I guess, if they're doing that or not. If they are, then we're going to have to throw a stand up in that tree right there pretty quickly. Or there's one way back in there that offers about a 20 yard shot to here, which is probably perfect too, so we're not right on the edge so they can't see us. Uh, stay tuned. Hopefully you'll see us in one of these trees here come this season.
All right, guys. So this is the creek we cross to not leave a scent on the other side over there. We don't really have a great way of doing it other than walking down that, which doesn't really always work that well. Um, the way the rain's got it right now, though, it kind of uh, kind of got it going where we can just walk straight down and somehow get across here, hopefully without slipping. Let's see if I can do it or not. Hey, we got it. Uh, that's a lot easier without a bow, without camera gear, with just this GoPro. But, as you can see, I got on my knee-high waders too, which is just something else to carry because you can't get across it very often, basically, without, see how I'm sinking in right now? But just regular knee-high boots, you can't do it. I'd have waders on to get across it, which is kind of frustrating. Uh, last year, we actually lost a 12-foot John boat. I had it tied up right up there, and it uh, the creek rose over the banks, actually, and snapped the rope and uh, broke it. So we got to climb all the way up there, but I might take a second and just chill in this water because it's actually really cold. It feels really good. So I'm gonna do that and just kind of cool off for a little bit, maybe get some of this poison ivy off my hands. And go from there. There's one camera up there. This is actually along that same pipeline we just talked about. Um, and then there's one way down there, which I have no idea where to cross down there. So I'm gonna have to make a crossing point for deer season. All right, guys, we made it to this one. As you can see, just stand right up there. I don't know if you can actually see it or not. Already getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, which I put off on. Uh, but what's happening here is they're crossing this pipeline again. It's pretty tall everywhere else, but right about here where we beat it down. So this is where we're kind of hoping they put it. We're gonna check this camera, see what's going on with it. How many photos we got? 202, so hopefully they are crossing this pretty good. Well, we're about to find out. All right, guys, we'll start out with just a little doe. A little doe, a little fawn, nothing too big. Probably not even quite the shooter yet this year. Then we get into, oh yeah, that's a nice eight pointer. You can tell it's video and it gets off the video pretty quick, but you can just see, oh yeah. He's probably at least a three year old eight pointer. And I have to try to get some more pictures of him once he drops his velvet, see if he's actually a shooter this year or not. Uh, this guy definitely is. His uh, his body's huge. He's got to be at least four years. He's either a nine or a ten. Can't exactly tell. One side looks like it's got more than the other. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a very impressive deer right there. I might have to look back on my other pictures to see. I don't think I've seen him before. And we don't have any more pictures of him this year yet. So hopefully. I can find which one he was last year. We had one with a weird side like that last year that might be him, but I'm gonna have to look back and see. Uh, hopefully that's him and he's sticking around this area because that'd be a nice four year old buck to take this year. That's all from this camera pool. There was a couple other doe ones, but nothing too serious. Uh, we're gonna head on down. It's about 500 yards that way, but once again, we're gonna take the creek so we don't leave a scent. So we're gonna back out the way we came in. So leave the less amount of scent possible, the least amount of scent possible, and then uh, jump in that other spot. We gotta move one camera over there and probably knock down some weeds like we did over here. All right guys, here's the creek we walked up in on. Up here, up here we think they bed somewhere about 300 yards that way. But they, they walked down this trail. As you can see there, we got the camera to catch them walking down this way. Uh, I had to knock down some of these, um, some of this grass right here, which I've already done. So we're going to try to catch them walking back, back and forth to their bedding here. 
I'm gonna move this camera just a little bit, angle it more. Uh, so gives it just a second, you know, hair longer just to, uh, hair longer just to uh, catch them coming and going. So right now we're getting kind of blurry pictures of them and this grass was kind of triggering the camera a little more than we liked. So cut it down a little bit and then uh, go from there. And we'll be back, going back out the exact same way we came in. No deer really take this, you know, this uh, creek right here. So it's kind of great. I'm trying not to get my scent up there as much as I can either. All right, we got that camera taken care of. We're back basically at the stand where that trail would lead up to. So you can tell we're back in the creek. The stand is right there on the edge of the creek. I don't know if you can actually see it on the GoPro or not, but it's right up in that tree, right along the edge of the creek. So the game plan is, once you get down in the creek, I'm gonna try to clear a path from up there, walk through the creek, cause it's only about a foot or two here, right up here, and then jump in the stand. And there's no scent gonna be involved. I won't be leaving a big scent. You could hop in there after work. You know, if you only have two hours, three hours left to hunt, I could hump it, I could hop, hop in there, wait for them, you know, basically the last hour or two of the daylight, you know, and not spook anything up while doing it, simply because I'm able to cross the creek. But, as you can see, that doesn't look like it's going to be easy to carve a path out. <laughs> so, we're going to try, but not sure if we're going to be able to do it or not. See, it's not crazy deep in here. Uh, we're going to see if this, uh, Underwater GoPro footage works or not. Not gonna lie, it's a little bit scary. First time I actually had put that thing in the water. <laughs> but hopefully you can hear me. Uh, if you can, then I guess it's still working. So uh, we're gonna try to clear out that path. Might be able to see that stand just a little bit better right there. All right, guys. Once again. Going back in this little 10 acre plot we got. It's not much to hunt, but with these small ones, you have to get in and out quickly. You can't be dragging your scent around. So we do have a, uh, a cell cam we have up that's kind of in the middle of it. I'm not gonna get to it today because I don't, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to knock everything, all the deer out. We've had actually some bucks on it already. Our stand is only about 10, 30, 40 yards into it. Uh, right here, so I'm gonna go check this tr this trail camera that's right by this stand to see because it kind of all funnels to where this trail cam will get the pictures at. So we're gonna check that, see what's on it, go from there. All right, guys, a little bit of a disappointment. We got some does, not too much. I only took about 20 pictures in the entire time we're in here, so it might be set up wrong. Uh, I don't think the stand's necessarily set up wrong because it could shoot the. There's a path over there but we're gonna go ahead and move this camera, see if we can get it into a better spot. You know, I can obviously see there's a trail coming here and when we put it here, there was an old, there's an old rub trail that goes throughout this entire way there. Uh, it's kind of why we put it here, which may, is making me think maybe we leave it. Maybe they're gonna start hitting it here in a couple months again. Uh, Cause about 300 yards that way, like I said, with the cell cam, we are getting bucks on it. They're just not filtering through right here for some reason so we got to figure out where they're exactly going to uh, they might be cutting out of the big block before they get over to this little pinch point um, I'm gonna stop the video there um, you know like I said it's great time it's gonna rain tomorrow so hopefully the scent that I did leave behind you know even though I'm leaving hopefully little will get washed out um, but hopefully the rain will wash out whatever I did leave uh, this is episode three uh, we probably won't check cameras too many more times before the season starts uh, here in October 1st in Illinois. So hopefully, you know, we can get out there. Me and Jamie both are having uh, baby girls. So hopefully we can get out there. Uh, maybe our wives will let us a few times, you know, once they're born. Um, we'll see what we can do. Uh, hopefully at least uh, the beginning of November, you know, mid-November, once the rut starts, we'll be able to get out there. So. Uh, stay tuned to, you know, the episodes coming up. Hopefully they're going to start being hunting here soon. And we can't wait till October 1st comes. If you like the video, you know, you want to you know, follow up with uh, how our season goes, please like and subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook too. Thanks.